Hi there, welcome back. Today's clip concerns mostly intelligence research and the phenomenon I discussed recently, which for lack of a better term I will call the JB paradox. I'll come to that later. So, unless you have an interest in intelligence research, you may want to skip this session, even though I will use some examples of JB's paradox in context with our political collectives. Let's first define what intelligence is and what a mess science has made out of a simple term. The definition I worked with shortly before the Mayflower back in the late 60s was pretty much the same later described by Robert Sternberg in 1998. It includes the ability to analyze, create and apply knowledge. Sure enough, that was not enough for intelligence researchers who promptly came up with a multitude of intelligences like social intelligence, behavioral intelligence, etc. Of those, I will introduce here only the moral intelligence, which is based on nothing else but a belief system that distinguishes between right and wrong and defines how to make sound decisions that not only benefit you, but others around you. The latter is especially helpful when analyzing the actions of those who have been elected to serve the very people who elected them. But I'm getting ahead of myself. At this time it would be rather helpful if one understands the enormous adaptability of the brain, at times called plasticity. One of the best examples is contained in a video clip to which you can find a link on my intelligence research blog. It describes a case where a young girl had to undergo brain surgery to have half of her brain removed. We found her seizures were all, all coming from her right hemisphere. And we knew that there is virtually nothing else, nothing but Rasmussen syndrome that can produce that picture uh, in a young child. Human beings are incredible creatures with a brain that is beyond belief in terms of its capabilities. To the point where we can take half of it out and still function in a normal way. Ten days after surgery, she walked out of the hospital and today plays with her other kids on the schoolyard with little handicap. This young lady had half her brain removed, went home, I guess maybe 10 days later, and was already walking. I mention this because there are still two misconceptions even among intelligence researchers. The first one is that heritage determines intelligence, yet not one single gene has been clearly linked to support that claim. Rather, intelligence is strongly influenced by environmental factors like education, education of parents and intellectual challenges. The next claim is that intelligence is a fixed measure, an absolute nonsense as I have shown in the late 60s by running trials on test subjects, exposing them to a carefully designed, challenging information overload. Within 90 days, the IQ increased from an average of 102 to 145, give or take a couple. In the mid 80s, Siegfried Lehl and Bernd Lange, two German intelligence researchers conducted tests, taking IQ tests on admission of patients in hospitals and in weekly intervals. Their work showed that a lack of stimuli leads to a loss in IQ, quickly to be regained and even exceeded when re-exposed to challenging information. Dr. Lear's findings supported my own work. However, having shown that the IQ is the result of exposure to intellectual stimulation, and therefore, under our own control, there seems to be a slight problem. I will call it the JB paradox. If anyone with an IQ of, say, 102 is capable of analyzing a situation, evaluating its implications and find remedial means, why do some people turn their intelligence off, facing a threat for themselves or the community? 
And no, for me as an analyst, the term acting irrational doesn't cut it. I want to know what the neuronal logistics are. Let me give you a recent example of JB's paradox. The nation facing a serious economic crisis at the doorstep of a depression. The vast majority of economists agrees that a stimulus is needed and the government is the only entity large enough to handle it. You are familiar with the donut that represents the balanced domestic monetary flow under full employment conditions. Contrary to Reagan and his successors, the government is nothing else but a community enterprise that in one form or another participates in the monetary flow. It does not matter who injects money into the donut, all benefit. Republicans now say that the only way we can get out of this hole is by cutting taxes. This is what the JB paradox is all about. They know or should know that it has never worked, especially not during the last eight years. Here's another graph. Indeed, Republicans claim that cutting taxes for big business will increase employment. Well, Exxon and Chevron had record profits in the $30 billion range in 2008. What did they do? They bought their own stock back, not higher. Now, let's look at the budget deficits from Carter through Reagan. Our government spends too much. Through Herbert Walker Bush, no new taxes. Read my lips. Through Democrat Clinton, who achieved a surplus. To George W. Bush. Now, let's look at the unemployment rates. First under Clinton. Then under Bush, reaching eventually over 7%. Seems to me like tax cuts didn't work so good. Oh, the other song is government spending has not worked on the FDR either. Well, the nasty thing is there are government databases and they show something else entirely. Indeed, after Herbert Hoover got unemployment up to 25 million by doing nothing, FDR got it down to under 4 million during his terms. Works for me. Even somebody with an IQ below average must understand that the opposition to government action will lead to a disaster. It will damage the economy seriously. I hate to tell you this, but I came across the statement of somebody else with a specific goal to damage our economy. According to the Jerusalem issue brief from December 28, 2004, Bin Laden divulged his goal to hit the Western economies. Here then is the JB paradox. Why would a party claiming to represent people actually act in that fashion, knowing that their old remedies, that is cutting taxes and are doing nothing, have failed before? An intellectual failure? I can't imagine. Is it their hope to win more seats if they can make the current approach fail? Good luck on that one. I'll see you. Have a beautiful day.